What's up, guys? How we doing? We got my second official ZBrush live stream here. Thanks for tuning in if you're tuning in here. It's a pleasure to be here as always. We got another tasty delicacy that we're about to craft up. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get into it pretty soon here. I just wanna make sure everybody can hear me and the music's chill, the volume's good, and then we can get to it. So if you're here, feel free to let me know. Everybody can hear me and the Oh wait, I can just click on the YouTube video itself. Lit. What's up, Jace Cover? Congrats on being first. You win the title. Gaming, loud and clear, dope. Appreciate that. Gaming 4D, nice. Second prize, that's all you, Joel Champ. What's on the menu? Can I make an order? Damn, people are just giving orders now. That's how it's gonna be. All right, uh, so just wanna clarify, I am also on Discord as we speak. So I kinda got a bunch of stuff going on. If you guys want to actually hear this and talk with me on the side, if you just go to discord.gg slash p4d, I think it should be in the chat, yes. Um, or in the, what do you call it, description. Uh, then you can just join in via Discord. But uh, I've muted them on here so they're not showing through. And uh, yeah, I think we can get to it. Today we got a nice one. Um, repping the Maxon shirt and we will be making a Dairy Queen Blizzard, I believe. And maybe some other stuff depending on how much time we have. But uh, yeah, let me uh, switch the screen here. Let's go tablet lit. So we're in ZBrush here, 2023.1.1. And I think we're just going to kind of get going with it. I'm going to uh, just move around some pure ref stuff here just so I can get settled. I like these images because they give you a huge idea of what the texture is going to look like. All right, whatever. Can you guys hear me? I bet. I'm debating whether I want to like mute myself on here so I'm not annoying if I'm like explaining stuff or vice versa, but uh, yeah, no, they can't. Yeah, it's probably a little bit of a delay. Also, let me know if you guys can hear the discord peeps. I pretty much turned it off so you guys shouldn't, but if in whatever case that you can, let me know but I'm 99% sure. I want to wet my appetite. Let's go. Hell yeah. What's up, Oliver? Yes. We're gonna be crafting a blizzard today. I'm not sure what kind, whether they're gonna make different ones or just one dope one. I kinda wanna do some crazy thing where I'm making like the gummy worms inside as well. It'll add for some different textures. But uh, yeah, got the work cut out for us. Dude, blizzards are fire. Even though I can't even handle this much sugar anymore, I feel like. I'm just gonna crash. <clears throat> right. Alright, so I'm starting usually with a Dynamesh Sphere. Uh, that's kind of how I start all of these. Because it starts... Gives you like a custom aspect ratio. And then... Uh, yeah, it's already Dynamesh version, so we can kind of craft up what we want. But pretty much immediately going to go to a sub tool and add a cylinder 3D. And then let's taper this guy out a little bit. Stepped. Mums, gotcha. Dope. Thanks for pulling up, bro. I like to group by normal so I can select the certain faces I want and delete the top since this will be where the ice cream is going to be. We don't need a cap. 
Delete hidden. No, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. BZM for Z modeler, and then I'm just gonna hover over a edge. Let's go insert single edge loop so that when we activate dynamic subdivision, it gives us a harsh line. Step the thickness a little bit. Appreciate that, Oliver. Thank you. What is better for doing build-ins or STH like that? Blender or ZBrush? I'm a little confused on the question. So let me know if you could elaborate. Oh, buildings. What is better for doing buildings? Oof. I, don't, I feel like I wouldn't be the person to ask. I don't make that many buildings, but... Um, ZBrush surprisingly does have a ton of uh, hard service capability, so I wouldn't say it's out of the question at all. I don't have as much... Yeah, I don't have as much... What's up? again? I don't know, is that... <laughs> Bro, what is going on? Yeah. What's up, man? Okay. This looks decent. I like not making these things too long because it's just the farther away you're going to have to be from the subject to get the whole thing in frame and then you don't get as much detail. Is it going over here? Oh, I see. Jesus, you got so fast movements in ZBrush. <laughs> Dude, I don't even realize that. I'd be like tweaking in ZBrush. I'm just like... It's probably not settling on the eyes, but... We're gonna work with it. I'm tweaking, I'm tweaking. Would you say? Bro... <laughs> Also, if you guys hear me talking to people, it's on the Discord, which you're more than welcome to join. We're all talking on here. So I'm not just like talking to myself. <laughs> Yo. I like making these things generally smaller in ZBrush so that when I have to move big shapes, I have a larger brush size. That's just me personally. And if you don't like that, you're wrong. So. Wait, I have a what? He dips? Uh, where's rigged? All 
All right, so let's make some ice cream. I want to get down to the nitty gritty. I think for this, like we don't need to have this whole thing filled with geometry. So we're going to add a, just a sphere that was already in here. Chop off this side just by, actually, if I go to transparency mode, you can see what's going on here. If I hold down control, drag up on the, the Y scale, you just pretty much carve out what you don't need. And then you can hold down Alt, reset the axis, and just make a general ice cream layer, which, good enough for me, redynamesh. And then maybe give us ourselves a little bit more room here. Hey, yo. Okay. So that's good. That's not going to mess us up or anything. Um, and then I'll probably disable transparency and give ourselves a little bit more dynamic resolution to work with. We're at 128. Let's go to 360. And then you'll see there's still some cracks and crevices here, so we'll probably just inflate this a little bit. You can find the inflate tab in the deformation uh, tab. I always want to say deformation channel. I keep thinking of Discord. Yeah. What I'm doing is just control tapping on the model to feather out the mask. And then I can just kind of rip one of these. So we're actually on this stream not going to be rendering this out. I'm going to do the whole thing in ZBrush <clears throat> and then continue on later on in Cinema 4D and most likely Octane um, via the Discord, which is usually my workflow. Um, but yes, so if you do want to see like the continuation of this past just the ZBrush modeling and sculpting part, then you should rip the Discord. Ripping, by the Urban Dictionary definition, is joining. Okay. Uh, I think there's 34 mugs watching right now. Yeah, I guess it depends on the uh, on the platform, I guess. All right, so we're chilling here. We need to rough this up. So it looks like in general we got some big swirls, but then you got some fine texture in there. So we're gonna rip both. Generally, you're gonna want to do the bigger swirls first. <clears throat> There's one feature I've been liking to use, which is the thick skin clay. And I don't I don't get to use it that often, but when I do. It's a vibe. Or as Yaden calls it, beagle vibe. <laughs> Bruh. Ellie, what's good? I can hear mad echo from myself. It's crazy. Okay. Oh, there she is. What's good? going on thanks for pulling up ts we're all just absolutely vibing hey yo i thought we were but damn <laughs> dude this is literally they should rename this the blizzard brush Like literally, it's a blizzard brush. Thick skin clay. Bruh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, what a vibe. By vibe, I mean probably not a vibe. 
What time is it over there, Ellie? In London, eh? Hey, yo. Oh dear. Everyone introduce yourself. Okay. I hope to God they cannot hear us on the YouTube thing. So now we're using the swirl brush to kind of take all these crazy things we just did and swirl it about. What do you mean? Ugh. Okay. I'm going to Z brush, or sorry, Z remesher, and I'm going to click half, and then we're going to go Z remesh, see what we get. Oh, Moxie's in here. What up? Moxie says, what up, cult? How are we doing? Usama Akil. Hey, man, love your work. Big respect. Appreciate you, bro. Big respect to you. Mox respect it. Oh, someone's... Wait. Yeah, your life showing. Um... Oh, large Snickers Blizzard, please. No syrup. Whoa. I just saw that. What's up, Lord Luigi? Yo, Luigi's in here. Like the actual Luigi. Yeah. All right, so we're just going to subdivide this once, and then we're going to go here and add a texture to this thing. Before we do that, let's, let's make it a little bit more close to the rim. We want this thing pretty fully. So, uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know, Ellie, who just joined in, is a trainer at Maxon. And she does uh, a lot of Redshift stuff as well. And hashtag goaded. Was good. Right. Hey yo. All right, so we're gonna go not to the surface tab. Let's go to noise. Give this thing a little bit more chunkier bits. Take the focal shift down, maybe. Crank it up. And we're just looking at the detail of some of these references. It's not too crazy, but. Uh, depending on which one we're going for. I like when it kind of gets grainy like this. That's kind of a web. <laughs> Beagle web. And we're going to mess by noise and then reverse and flee. Bruh.
They're looking chill so far. And sometimes, if you want to mess with some of these lifts, we're still in dynamic subdivision mode, so if you want to make these harsher, these edges, just add a, an edge loop kind of right here. So BZM for Z Modeler. Move it up. And we got a harsher edge. And if you really want to go brazy mode, add one in the middle. And then take this edge. Let's go. Yeah. Let's do edge to complete. Let's kind of puff out the edge. Boom. Speak English. Uh, Usama Akil, we have a question. He said a question. I am self-taught, still learning, can't afford art school slash college. Can I be part of the industry without a degree? Very good question. <clears throat> well, good news. I never went to school for 3D at all. I actually went to school for film, um, and I guess I would say I'm in the industry now. So never took a formal class. That was all just self-taught YouTube tutorials at the beginning, um, and I just kind of stuck with it. So I think it's less about the schooling and more like, can you stick with it without getting burnt out? And keep pushing yourself. So like, once you plateau, like, all right, I need to learn something new. Try something new. But what school did give me was just an environment where everyone was always creating and connections. And they actually had access to the softwares, Cinema 4D specifically. And that's where I was like, oh, well, I don't have to pay for this. Maybe I can just use the fact that I go to school and kind of start using this program that way. But I never took a class. So in that sense, you don't need school. Correct. That's a good point. Buddy Fen in the Discord said, if you don't have a lot of money, it makes kind of forces you to be more creative in how you create things, and you can't rely on certain techniques or applications, so you kind of end up uh, finding out a lot more. I think that's what he said. It makes you based, God. Oh, God. All right, what am I trying to do? Here? Okay, let's um, let's add a gummy worm to this thing if, if y'all don't mind. Is that chill? Sweet. Okay. What the gummy worm thing? Oh, that's fine. Gummy worm. How do we do that? So one gummy worm. Let's go. I try to think of everything in ZBrush very practically. How this would be sculpted in real life. Let's go sphere, which is essentially what a gummy worm looks like straight on. Right on, I'm gonna go hit W, control, drag up. Boom. Then we're gonna go mask pen, mask the front half, drag it out. Resolution. Let's bring this down. Few as I work, want to see a showreel portfolio. Never asked for a degree. Hundred percent, definitely. Yeah, I've never actually been asked for a degree in our world. I think the degree is just more of a a token of completion that you can stick with something. If anything, maybe I don't know. But yeah, I've never, it's not like being a lawyer or something. <clears throat>
And then for this, let me see. Could do like a... I won't ban this guy. He's in here. Ellie. Behave. Zero mesh this, so we have a decently puffed up uh, gummy worm. I guess that looks chill. And then we're gonna go a little bit smaller. Yes. So pretty much what I've done now is um, I've polygrouped these things. I think you guys can still hear me, right? Yeah. Uh, let me just check. Yes. Okay. So I've just polygrouped this worm into separate polygroups so I can actually select the parts of it that I want. Obviously, you got some parts that are not perfect. But when you Z remesh, keeping, let's do the same meta polygons. Matter of fact, let's double it. Hit keep groups. And then because we have smoothing set up, we can see that it actually smooths them here and it looks rather nice. So I think that's actually fine. And the cool thing with that is if you mask by feature, it'll mask the edges of the polygroups and then you can grow the mask and then inflate, puff up the parts more so if you want. Um, vice versa, you can kind of re like deflate these parts. And actually, usually the bottoms aren't too, um, call it usually the bottoms aren't too uh deflated so maybe i'll keep it like that and i'll just do one of these polish there we have a much more gummy worm inflated kind of thing here maybe uh yeah something like that and if the the edge is a little bit too puffed out you can always just go back to that initial thing we did and hold on control and drag up just like that then we can just select this, invert the selection, maybe feather it once, uh, feather it like this, just so we only have the bottom selected, and polish. And now we have a very nice polished, uh, polygrouped gummy worm. And it's just a small little thing, but sometimes it can help. 
and it uh it helps too if you also if you were like oh maybe i want to color this one a certain way later on uh, when you export to something like Cinema 4D, you can export the polygroups as different texture tags, and then you can uh, texture them that way. But these are just going to be one texture, as you can see here. <clears throat> so let's get these closer to the thing here, the ice cream. And, um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, come, come on. So, so we're gonna hit the gear icon here. We go bend curve. It's gonna give us two separate points: start point, end point. And uh, actually, before we do this, let's make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Wow. And every time I add a subdivision point or a, I guess, whatever you call these, you can just kind of finesse them even more. And then you can twist. Hey, yo. That one was with Ian, what? Hey. Oh, yeah, that's right. Dude, good times. They should do NAB every week. And night. Welcome to being a 3D artist. Hey, what up, hand tracks? 007. I'm glad you like worms. Because we're making them. Who says our eyes aren't real?
eating real worms like hit it. Hey yo. Alright, we're gonna go to this newer feature called proxy pose. And uh, essentially if you drag the slider up, you can get a very low resolution version of this, but it still keeps the polygroups to a degree. Um, and so now when I manipulate this, it's not gonna really destroy too much of the fine details anymore. So I can kind of move this around, lift it up, maybe put this in the ice cream, boom, just like that. But when I re-enable, it's gonna keep all the details that we had before. So uh, it can be a useful trick. And I can always re-enable proxy pose and maybe mask invert and just finesse this a little bit more Works for me Also, I just realized my PRF is being blocked by this, so maybe we'll... There we go. Uh, this will be saved, yes. So you'll be able to see this whenever, I believe. Um, but if you want to see the texturing aspect of this, then you might want to jump onto my Discord, which is in the description. And uh, that's where we all just like chop it up, chat all the time, and... Uh, work take these projects from zbrush into cinema 4d and currently octane this worm's looking a little weird so we're going to drag it out a little bit stretch it out it's just a little twisted maybe just inflate that up a little bit Again, not really a right or wrong way to do any of this. I mean, this is going to be barely poking out. And then what else should we add to the uh, this whole thing? Maybe three gummy worms is fine. Maybe one more. This music is a vibe. back to proxy pose and just set those uh, a little bit better and because we're in the same sub tool for these two we can just kind of uh, finesse these as much as we want Hey, yo. Yeah, food is a relatively new thing. I've been doing food for like a good year or two, I feel like. Um, and yeah, it's it's therapeutic. I feel like it's you get a lot of freedom too. So like when I make this stuff, it's like nobody's going to be like, yo, this thing should be like here or here. It's like you get so much more freedom to kind of do that. Um, and then mixing that with like technical abilities and stuff, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um but I think we should be good. Maybe I can add like a spoon or something later on in cinema. How long have we been? Okay, so 47 minutes, not too bad. We got some time. What else can we do here? We could add like some chocolate bits to it. There is, could add like chocolate drizzle. There's Oreo in this one, um, but I feel like I've done a ton of Oreo stuff in the past. So let me do like, there's also like chocolate bits. Um, so I'm trying to figure out 
Actually, you know what? Let's try doing a little bit of nano mesh maybe for these like small bits. Usually I, I might do that. See, I definitely usually would have done that in cinema. But if we're trying to stick ZBrush for the time being, maybe we can keep this here. So um, usually nano mesh only works when you have zero subdivisions, but we have subdivisions here. Um, so I don't want to disrupt that. Uh, actually, realistically, yeah, let me, uh, here's what we'll do. Let me go and create like a flat mask here. So what I mean by that is I'm literally just going to like control drag, create a mask only on the top half of this. Looks fine. I don't want it to dip below the, the stuff here. And I'm going to go sub tool, extract thickness of zero, extract, accept. So now we have this like flat mask, um, one sided normal mask. Um, of this, so it's its own sub tool. You can see what's going on here. And that's what we want. Um, the next thing we we'll wanna do is subdivide. Let's just take it by half, zero measure. We don't wanna have symmetry because there's not symmetry in this model right now. Kobe. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do this a couple times, half. As long as it's generally wrapped over this other thing. To me, that's fine. Do one more. Yeah, that's that's more than fine. Let me actually undo that and do like keep groups zero, so we're not smoothing anything. Just trying to just delete a lot of these polygons, um, and that's fine. And so we have this here. We're just now going to go to BZM for Z modeler. And then I believe. Let's see here. Yeah, let's go insert nano mesh right here. Polygon ball. Ball. And we're actually introducing just little cubes here. Um, and for now, that's fine. Right now, it's just, just imagine this will be um, little crumbs or whatever. And we're gonna mess with that now. If you go to the nano mesh tab, let's go show placement. Um, so we're actually hiding the the underlying mesh. We don't need that anymore because it's essentially just wrapping around the uh, the mesh that we mask that on top of. So let's see if I can this mesh. Uh, but we're gonna go to where is it? Yes, nano mesh tab. And we're gonna go, let's do random distribution. And now this is how we get these random bits um, of that same nanomish type uh, to kind of show up there. And this is where you can start randomizing and actually manipulating what these crumbs look like. So I'm gonna actually increase the size a little bit. Uh, increase the size and then take the, the variable down on each axis, we decrease actually. And uh, yeah, this is starting to look good. Like if you just imagine these are just different crumbs, and then we can go to this one editor called Edit Mesh. Let's go to split screen three. There we go. Let's move this out of the way real quick. And whatever we do to this mesh, it reflects over here. So let's move this over here. Just like that, oops. That's fine. We're going to real quick increase the size again, and then maybe take the Z offset and push these into the mesh. Just like that. And then we're gonna go to edit mesh again and finesse this just a little bit. So maybe subdivide, subdivide again. And really it doesn't have to be too crazy at all. Like what you're doing here is being reflected on the panel to the right. So we're just making little random sculpts here. Doesn't have to be anything too crazy. 
So it's hard to see, but when I sculpt on this, it's actually being affected on the right. So it's like we're making little bits here. And if stuff's getting a little bit too small, we can increase the size. They are being randomized. doing is making sure that this one piece is generally proportionate to a real uh, kind of cluster whatever you want to call it then we can use like a BHP or um, H polish brush to flatten certain edges or bring them out and you can see here we can increase the size of this or decrease the amount or increase the amount um, and if I look at the reference there which is completely being covered you can see that there's actually not too many of them so we don't have to be too crazy and then I'm actually gonna combine this with textural procedural displacement as well so they're probably gonna end up being a little bit smaller if anything but we can bring that down little bit more not as many but you have so much control with just this one menu um, yeah and then if you think there there's kind of too much going on you can actually take the Z and move them even further into the ice cream um, so for me that's probably good and the cool thing is if you were to move this it's actually not gonna distort the the meshes at all you can see they're just being moved. What you're doing is you're moving the mesh underneath. Um, so if you were to show placement, you're only moving this. This is why it's essential to kind of work off of this uh, mesh below because you have much less going on, but you have so much more control. So you can actually finesse these. If you're like, oh, I don't want to show as much in the center, just push this whole thing down in the center. So I'm sticking out of the edge full control or maybe you want them sticking out more so in the center and less at the edges looks good to me once that's done we're actually going to go to one two mesh and now you can see they're actually on one sub tool uh, right here and all you have to do is just hide this um, and you can just say split hidden now these are separate meshes, and we're just going to want to hide that one mesh that we overlaid everything on. But these, for the most part, are now baked into its own mesh. Joel, have a great night. Appreciate you joining. Not you. It's a D wave. Okay, cool. So I think that's good. Maybe just do like a spoon and we're good. I do have a little bit on Skillshare, but not a ton of stuff to answer your question. So now you're banned. Oh, what'd you say? Um, yeah, if I keep up with it for sure, it's been kind of a while since I've, uh, when I was really starting, it was very helpful because I was like, wow, this is good backbone money. Like, I was at school at the time, so at the time it was a much... Yes, for sure.
It's usually the opposite for people. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so we're pretty much looking good here. This to me is a decently finished before textured um, blizzard uh, by DQ. And uh, if you guys want to see the um, the finishing of this, feel free to join the Discord, which is in the description. That's discord.gg slash p4d. And uh, usually every single day in the morning around eight, to 10 Eastern, I'm on here kind of like making stuff. Um, catchy 3D, love that feedback, I appreciate that. That is the goal, glad you're hungry. Um, and yeah, so this is pretty much how I would make this thing in CG and uh, I'd carry it over later on. We did some texturing here, we did some gummy worms, so it's some, some soft stuff. And then we also did some nano mesh, which is new. So uh, this was fun. We'll probably whip this up later. We're all actually in my Discord right now, chilling. And, uh, yeah. Can't wait to see you guys there. Highly recommend it. And I think that's it for this stream, for sure. Appreciate you guys joining. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm always down to uh, kick it in the Discord. That's really, if you want to catch me or ask me stuff, that is where the vibe is. And, uh, yeah. I believe that's it, guys. I appreciate you joining. And we will see you in the next one. I have not made uh, available when i'll be streaming next but it should be sometime next month um no problem and then after that we'll just keep it going if you guys want to know and keep up to date with when i will be streaming next join my instagram which is just patrick underscore 4d that's where i post all this work the finished product here will be posted on instagram and uh hope you guys enjoyed got something out of it we'll see you guys 